Welcome to Larry the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. And we have a real special episode for you today. And I have a really special guest with me. I have Hans from the Netherlands, and we are going to be discussing historical artwork used on heavy metal album covers. And Hans is an art historian. He specializes in modern art, and he also specializes in his favorite era of art, which is 1880 to 1940. So uh, this is a real treat to have someone as qualified as Hans here to uh, dive into this uh, very interesting topic. We're going to be showing you the original artwork, uh, the historical piece of art. Hans is going to be giving us some information and facts on that. And we're going to also be showing you uh, some of the album covers that these pieces of historical art were used on. So Hans, thank you so much for joining me here today at The Lair. I'm really excited for this episode. Yes, me too. <laughs> thank you for having me on the video and the show. All right. So Hans, take us back. Where, what got you interested in hard rock and heavy metal? Who is the band or what was the album? When, when did it start for you? I think it started in 1979 when um, Kiss had in Europe and in Holland uh, a big hit with uh, um, I Was Made For Loving You, of course. Um, I knew Kiss existed, but it was uh, far from, from me. I, I was in 1978. It was a great a fan of uh, of uh, Greece, so <laughs> it can change in one year. But there also was status quo, cheap trick, etc. That was my gateway to um, to uh, real heavy metal. And via Kiss, I uh, discovered Iron Maiden, 1980, 1981, I think. And that was, of course, uh, the real thing for a boy uh, aged 15. And also the cover art by Derek Riggs uh, was very. Uh, uh, it, it, it took my attention, of course. So when, when, did, <laughs> when did your interest in art in heavy metal sort of, uh, how did that come together? Was it like Derek Riggs, for instance, the Iron Maiden covers or? Yeah, of course. Um, first, I was uh, my love for heavy metal and art rock, of course. And then years later, I uh, studied uh, history of art. All, uh, all the ages and middle ages and the renaissance and modern art, etc. And uh, gradually, I became interested in, uh, of course, the lyrics and the atmosphere, but also the cover art. And then there was a difference between um, cover art, especially made, eh, designed for uh, the band, for the album, and cover art, as we are talking of today, um, based on existing artwork. So that's two different things. Yeah. So, so today, like you said, we're going to be looking at bands that have taken a piece of art history and you know use that on their album covers so okay so here we go uh give me a second here and we are going to be sharing with you our first picture and all right there he is all right, so what do we have here, Hans? Here we have um, Hieronymus Bosch, a Dutch painter uh, from uh, the Renaissance, so 16th century, this some ages ago. Um, famous painter. This is also a very famous painting. It's a, a Garden of Earthly Delights. Um, and you can see it if you want to in the Prado Museum in uh, Madrid, Europe, of course. Um, the, the painting, of course, is uh, full color, and this picture is also in full color, um, but the band that used the detail from one of the three panels, um, by a technical mistake, they um, made a black and white um, uh, cover. Um, and of course, I'm talking about uh, Deep Purple, with their self-titled album uh, from 1969. Um, you see it here. It's, it's, it, this is a detail from the picture we saw uh, from uh, Jeronimus Bos. And as you can see, I hope, uh, but there are two musical instruments in the left corner, uh, upper corner. And there you see the five members of Deep Purple. Um, 
pre-photoshopped into the painting. Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the real painting, there's a group of people, as you can see in the behind them. Let's go back to the but they photoshopped uh, the band uh, members yeah, in the picture. Of course, it's the, it's the right panel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are three panels. Yeah, that's the right. Uh, so it's, it's a small detail. Two, two musical instruments and some uh, figures around them. Um, so the, the, the story is in the left side, there is paradise. You see uh, God, the father in the pink dress, creating uh, Eve from a bone of Adam. And there's a fountain of life, etc. So it's all um, beautiful and agreeable. The main panel, the uh, you see under in, in the middle, is mankind before the flood. So when it was uh, all uh, good and pleasant on Earth, although they they all people are naked and they are uh doing strange things and there are animals and uh, and fruits and uh, it's it's and and uh, strange balls etc so it's it's not a normal uh picture of it's not paradise but it's um mankind in its first days and as you can see it's almost like and that's where bosch is famous for it's almost like a kind of a lsd trip full of <laughs> uh, 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 fantasy and uh, uh imagination and strange things happening but of course there are more bands i use this picture i don't know if you uh, I, I came across it uh, pearls before swine i don't know if you heard yeah. about them yeah. they were yeah. um, before deep purple already and they, they took another uh, detail of the same uh, panel on the right, as you can see, that's much darker huh, the panel on the right, because that's a depiction of hell. Um, and it, the strange thing with Jeronimus Bos is that he uh, does not use the same images as in the Middle Ages. There's uh, almost always a central figure of Satan or a devil. You don't see a devil. What you see is also very strange um, instruments uh, in strange scenes of uh, uh, torture torture uh, animals eating humans excreting humans it's one lsd trip and also it's of course a warning to be uh, a good person or else you uh, will go to hell um, <laughs> or you'll land up on a deep purple album cover yeah <laughs> that's not so well worse of course <laughs> So it's a focus on the fantastic, and it's um, an, a nice um, fact that in the hippie era, so uh, uh, the 60s, uh, this painting became uh, popular again. And it's because of the use of drugs, I think, and the love of the fantastic and, uh, and the beautiful. And, uh, but of course, as a heavy metal or hard rock band, you take something from the right panel, from the hell panel. And... There is another famous um, band cover, album cover. That's the next one. Okay. Yes. Using a detail from the same painting. And that's this one. You recognize it, I think. It's a very small detail. You can overlook it very easily. It's um, in the upper right. Uh, corner of the right panel. So it's a very small detail and it's blown up into this because he, he worked very uh, precise and very meticulous. You can uh, use a very small detail and uh, still see uh, uh, people and things and fire and burnings and etc. And of course it's a depiction of um, hell. Maybe you can we can see the uh, album cover this is the detail. I think you uh, already recognize it. It's by Celtic Frost into the Pandemonium from 1987. So that's one small detail from the right panel of the uh, Garden of Earthly Delights. And you see uh, um, 
it's a it's 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 a kind of a pandemonium. Right? It's a fire. It's a hell. It's a dark. It's uh, gloomy. And as Tom Warrior, Thomas Gabriel Fisher, uh, told in an uh, interview, uh, it's a strange album. Huh? It's an experimental album, uh, different from their first album. Um, but it's about uh, the 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 um, damnation, the uh, darkness, the, the pandemonium. Literally, it means all spirits have huh? pandemonium. It's a release of all the evil spirits. And Thomas Fisher likes, of course, uh, these dark, uh, depressing uh, pandemic uh, images. So it's, it's not a surprise that he chose this one. But I don't know if everybody knew that it's a very small detail from um, uh, the, the Garden of Earthly Delights by Bosch from, it's from 1510, so it's a very long time ago. But in this context, from by Celtic Frost, Celtic Frost, uh, into the pandemonium, it looks almost as a modern painting <laughs> because yeah. it's yeah. just a detail. It's very expressive, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the capital of hell. The pandemonium. All right. Shall we move on? Yeah. All right. The next one. Next one. Also a famous cover. This one, a strange cover also from an artist we will uh, about who I tell you uh, something later. Also, uh, I tell you something later about Celtic Frost. Um, this is by Atomic Rooster, uh, Death Walks Behind You. It's, yeah, is it a hard rock album? Yeah, it's proggy, hard rock, bitchy boogie. Um, uh, album, but it's um, a famous cover, I think, and it's an, uh, a frightening cover. It's done by William Blake, a romantic artist living from, I have the, the years, 1857, 18, sorry, 1757, 1827, and this is from 1820, so it's also an, an old picture, and it's a strange one, um, William Blake is uh, popular in the by heavy metal bands because of his uh, visionary um, uh, fantasy, uh, mythological, he has his own mythology, mythological pictures. And it's very, um, this is the old, also this picture full of anguish. It's um, a painting called Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was, um, legendary king from the Old Testament. It's also a biblical uh, subject, but he, he uses biblical subjects in a very um, personal uh, manner, very personal uh, style. He was a ruler and he was he lost his mind somewhere and so somehow, and then he was reduced to uh, uh, the stadium of a beast. So you can see him eating grass like an oxen. He's on all fours. He's it, uh, half man, half beast, changing into a beast. And of course, his um, uh, expression is full of anguish and, and fear. And it makes me think uh, about, um, uh, what's that um, cover from the, um, the Proc Rock, also from 1970. King Crimson. King Crimson, of course. It's almost the same <laughs> expression. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's uh, uh, covered these uh, album cover designs, especially made for them. Um, what can I tell you more? Um, yeah, William, pa William Blake was a painter, a, a poet, and a thinker. And also, as we can see later on, uh, it, uh, he had visions, he was a visionary artist, and he saw things from uh, the spiritual world. And this is also a, a visionary, strange uh, picture. But it has nothing to do with um, the title, Death Walks Behind You, because this is not a depiction of death. But as you see, if you take it out of the context, uh, for, it's a, um, 
a painting by a romantic artist taken from a biblical source from the Old Testament, made it into a kind of a personal picture. And as you use it as an album cover in 1970 and you uh, uh, call it Death Walks Behind You, then the whole picture changes. changes. Because the first <laughs> thing you think is, uh, when you see this, this is, uh, this is probably death. <laughs> but he is not. Awesome. Okay. okay. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Next one is in full color. The painting is, of course, in full color, and the, uh, the album cover also in full color. Uh, by Bolt Thrower, English uh, death metal band. Uh, it's called The Fourth Crusade. This is the painting and not the album cover from 1992. And the picture they used is by a French artist, 19th century artist, Eugène Delacroix, one of the uh, big names in French art and European art from the 19th century. He chose, uh, chose uh, mostly historical scenes, and this is one of them, that is the Crusaders entering Constantinople. Um, why they chose this is because, uh, of course, as we all know, I think um, the main theme from Ball Thrower is war. It's a historical war, uh, and it's um, also a kind of that it's not about aggression and, and uh, sensation but they use it in historical context and war history is a main theme by them but it's also the agony and pain etc to individuals so it's not uh, glorifying war it's not like men of war <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is a 19th century french painting Crusaders entering uh, Constantinople. Um, as you can see, they're plundering and murdering when they enter the streets. There are people around them begging for mercy, but they don't get mercy. Uh, and it's one of the um, great historical events dealing with uh, uh, plundering and war. So it's, it's a, a fitting picture for a band like uh, Bolt Thrower. Um, yeah, it's historical. It's an historical uh, uh, fact. Awesome. Uh, and they used it uh, without without any alterations. Yeah. They used it. Sure. Okay. That's... Yeah, some albums can really capture the the band really well, yeah. you know, and or the mood of the album, and that's one. When I think of Bolt Thrower. There are some bands that their covers are so you you think of the band and you think of some of these covers like that cover for instance when I think of Bolt Thrower I think of that yeah. that album yeah. cover and it definitely sets the mood for the band and for the album. Okay, uh, next yeah, it's history and war. <laughs> yeah, the next um, Bruce Dickinson of course um, Tyranny of Souls album from two thousand five. This is the oldest painting I found. It's from 1480. So it's uh, uh, also from the Northern uh, Renaissance by Hans Memling. It's a German artist from the uh, 15th, 16th century in uh, Europe. Um, this is also part of a, a triptych yeah, of a painting consisting of three uh, panels. And it's you can, um, uh, it, it's, it's like Bosch's work. Huh? It's a warning against, um, in this, in, in uh, vanity, human vanity. You can see it here. This is the context where it belongs. So that it's also a story, a huh? warning. In the middle, you see the naked woman uh, and uh, the mirror and uh, a nice landscape. She is uh, symbolizing man's vanity and that's of course not a good thing in uh, christian belief so there on the left side you have death that's what awaits us all personification of death with some text and on the right if you will not live a good life you will uh, end up in the uh, jaws of a beast or a fish-like monster 
you can see all the damned uh, naked people uh, uh, disappearing in the in the jaws of that monster and then of course the devil a very strange devil dancing on the on the damned people he holds a scroll it says in hell there is no redemption so <laughs> live mm -hmm. a good life or you'll end up there and it's a, it's a strange devil that's a, a fantasy monster with a face on his belly that's also a very personal interpretation but as you can see the in the uh, middle ages and early renaissance have uh, 14th 15th century 16th century they normally choose um, a personification of evil and that's of, of course satan or the the devil and in the painting by Euronymous boss and the deep purple you don't see uh, a satan it's uh, the torturing people uh, by animals or by uh, uh, musical instruments it's, it's crazy uh, crazy picture Right. And this is what people, right. uh, because there, there were uh, uh, not so many images as we have today, of course. So when you see this, you uh, think I have to get a better life. Or <laughs> don't get these fires these, and jaws. These were the public but service announcements of the uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, ancient, ancient years, you know. But a strange thing is that um, the album is about, as Bruce told us about um, uh, techniques, technology, uh -huh. as a means of escaping human problems. And it's a more of a sci-fi, uh, the, the lyrics, themes. And this has nothing to do with the album, I think. <laughs> Can you see a link? No, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Uh, it's not about devil. Right. Devils and, uh, I guess he just thought it looked cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he and and it's in the public domain, so he doesn't have to he doesn't have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. All right, next one here. Also important, yeah. Yeah. Candlemas, Tales of Creation, 1989. Probably uh, recognize it immediately. Um this is a drawing by also a French painter from the 19th, uh, artist from the 19th century, Gustave Doré, Gustave Doré, uh, from 1866. There was a project uh, of the publication of a new, uh, of the, a, a new publication of uh, the Bible, and then it had to be illustrated with hundreds of new images uh, from the, the Old and New Testament. And this is um, from, Genesis, huh? not the band Genesis, but the book of Genesis, <laughs> the creation of light. You see God the Father uh, with his arms up, and then uh, the clouds disappear, darkness uh, makes room for light, and then the sun is uh, coming up behind him. Um, so it's, of course, the creation of light. Um, I think it's... Um, it fits the, the mood and the atmosphere of the band and the album because it's, uh, of course, doomy, yeah, doom metal. Uh, and this is also with, with the dark clouds and the, the, the sun uh, behind the majestic figure of uh, God the Father. Fits the album. Is this the original <laughs> color of, of the album? Because on the Candlemas album, it's a very yellow... Yeah. Did they add that yellow coloring? The the yellow coloring is, I think, uh, and, 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 uh, done for the. It's 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 also it's the, the album cover is a detail. Yeah, it's almost the whole uh, uh, painting, but it's kind of a detail. Here right? we have the cover. It's made into a square, of course. Yeah. yeah. Square form. Okay. That's the next one. You go to the next one. I'll go to the next one. Okay. This 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 one is is okay. This was good. Okay. I don't know if we, if we have a, um, an example of the of the painting, but we we know it. It's uh, uh, the 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 drawing of God and, and the creation of light, but then the square form. They didn't alter it um, very much. 
Um, this is a nice story. Um, I first tell something about what you see here. This is a detail, also a detail, lots of details today, of a, a monumental uh, a sculpture by Auguste Rodin. And Auguste Rodin also was a French artist, um, known for his sculptures like this. He was a kind of an impressionist, um, an intellectual uh, uh, sculpture. And he was busy with this uh, enormous um, uh, collection of sculptures in, in, in his gates of hell. And I have a picture of that. That's his most famous um, sculpture. And this is uh, a detail used by a band we see in a minute. So this, this is also not the whole um, gates of hell, huh? the, the Porte de l'Enfer. And in the middle, you see the most famous um, figure, and maybe you recognize him, it's the thinker by Rodin. And the thinker, the man thinking, sitting and contemplating something. And he's surrounded by floating people, naked people all around. And it's an it's a, a, a intellectual concept. And he, uh, it, he, I think he started in 1880 or something, and he was finished in 1917. I think it was a, he was busy with it all, uh, all his lifetime. Um, it's very elaborate, monumental sculpture. And this is a detail, floating people. Um, as you can see, very uh, uh, realistic and, 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 and impressionist um, made. But in, in the next um, picture, John, okay. because coroner, <laughs> coroner, the, the uh, technical trash band, Trio used it, this uh, detail, uh, as uh, for their uh, cover, for their album, for their L as cover for their uh, album art. And the record company said, this is not metal enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I can, I can understand why the, uh, the band had to uh, agree, had to consent with it, that they had to use another uh, picture. Um, but yeah, maybe they had a point because it's not really metal. Um, but as you know, coroner is also is not uh, your uh, typical thrash band. Yeah. They're a little more Thrash-based. thinking, a little more cerebral. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's why they choose a, a very a completely different um, type of album cover. But it turned out to be this one. I think we have a um, example in a minute. It's by Alfred Rethel. It's not a very famous uh, German artist from 19th century. Uh, and this is, of course, very metal. It's a skeleton uh, playing the violin with bones. And he's, and the, he, he's surrounded by uh, dead people because in the uh, uh, you see a seated figure in the background with a kind of Egyptian wardrobe. And that's uh, uh, personification of cholera, so it's uh, it's um, an outbreak of cholera in Paris, 1831. That's why the people are uh, fleeing and uh, going away. Yeah, that's metal, of course, but very uh, yeah standard mm-hmm. <laughs> skeleton. Can't go wrong with skeletons. You can't go wrong with skeletons and skulls no. and things like that on a metal album cover. Yeah. All right, well, here's a little bit of a, a change. That's something else, yeah. And why is it something else? Because it's in full color. Huh? Lots of lots of albums are also in black and white. Uh, very recognizable. Uh, it's uh, in your face. A screaming bandaged man with forks in his eyes, mouth open, screaming. And of course, it's... Uh, Blackout by the Scorpions from 1980. Uh, but I, I didn't know, and I do not know if many people know it, um, that uh, it's an existing uh, painting by Gottfried Helmwein, a still living artist. From, he's from 1948. He lives in 
uh, Ireland and in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, also um, a painting from 1980. Yeah? So it's, it's, it's not specifically made for the scorpions. They knew each other. There, there is a photograph of uh, the scorpions with him dressed <laughs> with the bandage and uh, the forks because he made a, uh, a photo of it and it's and th this is the painting but it's of course photo realistic it's very uh, uh, detailed and very um, photograph like um he, the 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 he, the painter Gottfried Helmwein is not very famous, but uh, in some circles he's very famous. He's a, a modern artist uh, still living and working. And normally he chooses um, subjects from history, some uh, provocative uh, subjects, that's, that's what he likes. And he combines it with um, style derived from uh, Walt Disney and pop art. So it's always very ambiguous. But this is this very metal. It's a screaming man bandaged. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I think a lot of people thought that was Rudolf Schenker on the cover, but it's yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It looks like him because of the mustache and everything. But yeah, of course, yeah. That's what I thought also. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is a famous one. Uh, Blessed Are the Sick by Morbid Angel, and that is from 1991. Um, this is the painting they took as their uh, album cover. A uh, lot of uh, doom, death, and thrash uh, uh, people like this uh, painting because they used it as an uh, album cover. Blessed Are the Sick, and um, again, there is the, the, the question uh, does this painting mean the same as the album cover. Is this uh, uh, is this image uh, blessed or sick? And no, of course not. Mm -hmm. It's a painting by uh, Jean Delville. Jean Delville. Uh, it's a Belgian artist from the 19th century, and it's called Satan's Treasures. So the 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 title is very metal, but uh, blessed or sick or, uh, also. Uh, by the way, it's a coincidence. I read that. The thrash metal, Swedish thrash metal band Hexenhaus used the, the same uh, cover, same image on their cover, um, you know, a tribute to insanity from 1988. So, and it's a coincidence, yeah. Maybe this because this painting is screaming metal or whatever. <laughs> it's not so screaming yeah. metal as it um, appears to be because um, Jean Delville was um, a Belgian symbolist artist. That means um, uh, he tried to visualize the invisible or the transcendental or uh, spiritual truth. For him, uh, natural truths, as we can see them on this earth, are just as truth as spiritual truths. Um, and one, so, so as a mankind, we have to uh, reach for the spiritual, the higher, uh, standard, and uh, as you can see in this uh, painting, the uh, river of sleeping, unconscious, naked people uh, symbolize men in an unconscious state. They are uh, still in a materialistic, earthly state, and that's what Satan wants, and that's why it's called Satan's treasures because now they are uh, floating, unconscious to. Uh, to his uh, to hell and the say oh sorry <laughs> yeah. there's one thing yeah there he is I think they en enhanced the, the the colors that's how we know it morbid angel blessed are the sick um, it's strange uh, Satan the same strange devil completely different from um, what we saw huh, by Bruce Dickinson, The Tyranny of Souls. This is not a monster, yeah, kind of a monster, but it's almost angelic or uh, human. But it's not, not a terrifying uh, devil or Satan. He has kind of tentacles, etc., and strange hair, but and he's very pleased uh, with his uh, uh, river of treasures, of 
people in unconscious state. So I think um, the, the uh, original painting is telling a different story than uh, Blessed Are the Sick. Yeah, Did I would imagine for, for a lot of these bands, they're just, they just think it looks cool. <laughs> yeah. So they, they just, they just go with it. You know, they're, they're not probably thinking too much about. Yeah. There's a Satan in there. Or, uh... All right. Something yeah. a little more, a little more lighthearted here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Of course. There are some more lighthearted pictures like this one by uh, Vandenberg. And it's the, uh, um, also a very realistic uh, uh, style painting. Uh, we see uh, two sharks over a highway in the desert. Um, and that makes it, uh, as we say, surrealistic. Uh, the style is very realistic and recognizable in the, in the objects, but the scene is not very probable. That, that's, the, that makes, that's the tension that gives it. But it's a, it's a very nice painting, I think. I like it. Um, I don't know if it fits the uh, style of the band head. It's a very radio-friendly uh, uh, hard rock style. I don't know if everybody knows that um, the painting and the next one also uh, for on, on this Vandenberg uh, album is done by Adrian himself. He was raised and educated as an artist here in Holland. Um, in the early 80s, and this, this is the style he uh, used when he began, of a, in his early, early 80s, when he had Vandenberg as a uh, band, and he was still um, active as a, a painter. Well, it's a very accomplished uh, and talented painter, I think. It, this is the same, uh, it's very realistic in the appearance, but it's not very probable that a crocodile <laughs> emerges from the ground in a deserted Maya temple. <laughs> yeah. I never knew that. I, I never knew that he was an artist. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Very talented artist. So he's a, a double uh, talent. He's still working as an artist uh, nowadays. But he never makes this uh, kind of photorealistic or surrealist uh, paintings. He's now making very expressive, almost uh, abstract art. Yeah. Um, he used it for another band, the, the, the more uh, abstract art. <clears throat> okay. Here's one that I really like. Yeah. It's, uh, I heard it on the podcast yesterday <laughs> yep. we just did uh, we just, yep we just covered the eternal idol and uh yeah. you know well you you tell the story about this this statue because this is not the statue these are two people posing like yeah. the statue and I'll, I'll flip in between the two while you're talking about them yeah didn't know that because it's not very obvious when you don't look uh very well um this is this is the uh, original uh, uh, sculpture statue done by Auguste Rodin, yeah, uh, who we saw with uh, Gates of Hell uh, with uh, Coroner. So it's, uh, he's twice uh, as an artist here. Um, it's it is the, the the statue is called the Eternal Idol. Mm -hmm. So I think they they took the uh, the title. Uh, two naked. People, woman and uh, man, the man is kneeling before the woman and kissing her or something like that with his hands on his back. So he, um, it's, it's, I think he adores the woman and that's, it's, a, uh, it's a, a universal theme, I think, of uh, man adoring women. And in his time, women were also seen as uh, femme fatale, as a, uh, Attractive, attractive, but also dangerous. And I think it, this uh, statue gives the tension between uh, dangerous and attractive. I don't know, and I don't know if you know, John, why Black Sabbath choose this theme, this title and this um, image. Because what we see here, they, there were problems with the reproduction rights. It's in, I think in Paris in the Rodin mm -hmm. Museum. Um, so they took two people, a woman and a man, to reenact the uh, statue. So these are two living people, and they are uh, painted with bronze paint uh, and giving the 
the, the same uh, scene. And they had to be hospitalized. Uh, I understood after this because the paint was very uh, toxic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't really know yeah, the story yeah, about why story, they yeah. uh, why they used that, uh, you know, that title or if they had the title. I'd imagine that this, the title inspired them. I mean, the, the song, the, the song Eternal Idol doesn't really have anything like yeah. related to to the sculpture here and and i actually kind of like the angle of the original like they're you know they're, they're sort of flipped around in your uh perspective here you're sort of seeing them from from the other yeah. side i sort of like the yeah. original uh uh better but uh, for the longest time i never when i was younger i i thought this was a statue i didn't realize it yeah. was two two people posing like a statue <laughs> me neither yeah <laughs> all right let's see what we got next here oh yeah bruce is back yeah this is um william blake again so we have uh, twice uh, auguste rodin and uh, william blake as i said he's very popular in the metal uh, world and why because his art is also um uh, uh, dark and full of fantasy vision strange uh, almost a bit uh, frightening so we here uh, have a monster and it's not a normal monster it's a, it's a, a, a creature half man half reptile and half uh, vampire it's the ghost of a flea and the story goes that uh, William Blake a romantic painter from the 18th century he could see um, uh, creatures, uh, spirits before him. And one time there was a friend of him, he said, can you uh, draw me one if you see them? I said, okay, give me a paper and a pencil because I see them, I see a one right now. And it was this, <laughs> the ghost of a flea, he painted this um, creature. It's a, a very strange, uh, a creature, of course, with the curtains and the stars. He holds a bowl in his hand and he has his tongue stuck out of his mouth and in his other hand he holds a thorn. Why is that? Because uh, he explained, William Blake, that uh, all fleas are uh, inhabited by human souls and human souls are uh, bloodthirsty. So there's a, a combination of bloodthirst uh, a kind of a, a monstrous creature and uh, the human instincts. Um, of course, we recognize this as an album cover. It's one of my all-time favorite albums by Bruce Dickinson. We, we don't have a picture of the album cover, I think. No, no because no. it's very yeah. uh, narrow. No, no. It, it doesn't add uh, that much. Uh, one of my favorite albums of all time, uh, 1998. Um, uh, uh, Bruce Dickinson is, I think he's uh, a, a Blakeian. He's, he adores uh, William Blake, he know, as a poet and yeah. as, a, as yeah. an artist. Uh, and he uses his imagery and his themes and his lyrics uh, during the whole, uh, con is it a concept album? It's about William Blake texts and myth mythology. It's um, um, dark in atmosphere. It's uh, because it, the uh, theme of the chemical wedding is it, that's not a theme by William Blake, but that's a very, it's an old theme by R Rosicrucian order. That's a kind of occult uh, uh, order. That's <clears throat> where the title comes from. A chemical wedding was of course and, and he uses teams from uh, shakespeare and william blake and, and it, it's a i think it's a, a very uh, beautiful uh, combination of these occult and uh, mystical images and texts and i think it's the, the the image fits the the atmosphere of the album very well oh yeah very uh, much so yeah the the sound and the lyrics and the artwork it's all yeah this is uh, of course this is a 
a detail he also made william blake this is a drawing this is the head of a ghost of a flea also with a see, see his tongue again and a uh, detail of his mouth with his with the teeth yeah i don't know if he really could see them but these are visions and not this is in uh, this is not fantasy so. Very cool. Yeah, All right. Creatures. And our last one here, this is certainly a legendary yeah. um, cover. Uh, yeah, it's the devil aiming at us with Jesus Christ in his hand, using as a catapult. Very strange and dark and rec uh, immediately recognizable uh, picture from uh, Celtic Frost, to Megatherion, um, meaning the great beast um so this is another image of a beast or satan or a devil or a spirit or whatever but in the uh, style of uh, hans hudi giger uh, the swiss artist who still has his own um, uh, museum in uh, switzerland and it's full of uh, in, in its typical uh, black and white and gray uh, style uh, it's 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 evil it's brooding it's uh, but it's also uh, uh dark and full of fantasy and strange creatures on the left and right with a hat and full of strange uh, personal symbols uh triptychon of course uses his uh, artwork because uh, i think we know a lot, a lot of us know that uh, uh, thomas gabriel fisher tom warrior is was a close friend of the artist of uh, giger and uh, he told us also in an interview that uh, he uh, Giger uh, gave this painting to them to use it as an uh, album cover when they were with Hellhammer and when and, and uh, an early Celtic Frost when they were uh, in his own words we were nothings <laughs> and then he was uh, glad that there was an artist in his uh, in, in Switzerland who had interest in them so and then we, they became friends and um tom is still uh, working at the museum with the, the wife of uh, giger and as a kind of a curator or uh, advisor and yeah this i think uh, sums it up it's in metal and it's art and it's uh dark in, in, yes in very, one, yes. very scary album cover <laughs> <laughs> in 1985 it was the most scary album cover yeah very intense for sure for sure all right one eye staring at us all right well this has been absolutely fascinating hans i really appreciate all the work that you put into this and all your insights yeah. uh this just i just i loved this uh we're gonna have to have you back on the channel maybe we can do a fantasy uh Would be nice. fantasy yeah. like art in heavy metal album covers because i'd say that's another pretty popular uh, theme you know there's some pretty famous fantasy artists that get used a lot within the world of uh heavy metal so so this yeah. was absolutely fascinating thank you so much uh let us know in the comments down below what you guys think of some of the artwork that hans shared with us today let us know some other i, I mean we could have gone on and on with this i'm sure there's a lot <laughs> of other examples we just uh hans picked some you know, some ones that he thought would be most interesting, maybe share down below in the comments some pieces of historical artwork uh, that uh, you like uh, on metal album covers. So thanks again, Hans. Uh, hopefully we'll have you it's back my pleasure. here. Hopefully we'll have you I back. I hope come back, yes, of course. <laughs> awesome. It'll be a pleasure, yeah. Awesome. All right, well, thanks again. And uh, for everybody out there, make sure you stay heavy, stay metal.